So here we have this rigid body 3D equilibrium problem. We need to determine the components of the reaction at the ball and socket joint A and the tension in the supporting cables DB and DC. So let's take stock of our unknowns here. At A, this is a ball and socket joint. So you should know how these act. These things keep that point stationary which means it's going to put a force at this point. And this force may have three components. So this is going to be three unknowns right here. AX, AY, and AZ. Now we're going to have an unknown here, the tension here, tension BD, but that's only going to be one unknown because essentially we know the direction of this force here. It's got to be directed from D to B, so as you'll see it's only one unknown. Same deal with TDC, another unknown. So all in all, five unknowns, and we have six equations. Some forces X, Y, and Z, and some moments X, Y, and Z all equal to zero. So we can definitely handle this system. So my first step will be putting these tension force vectors into Cartesian vector form in I's, J's, and K's. So to get my tension vector, DB, I'm going to need a position vector going from D to B. And to make that, I'm going to do the coordinates of B, my final, minus the coordinates of D, my initial. It's just final minus initial to get that position vector. So it looks like the coordinates of B will be a 0 in the X, a negative 1.5 in the Y, and a positive 3 in the Z. Okay? Coordinates of D, D looks to be a little forward in the X by 1 meter. So it's going to be 1 in the X, positive 1. Nowhere in the Y, we're not this way or this way. So zero in the J. It looks like we're up a distance one in the Z. So I can do my vector subtraction here. The components of B minus the components of D. So let's do that. Zero minus one is a negative one. Negative 1.5 minus zero is negative 1.5 and 3 minus 1 is a positive 2. So we got our position vector, but now we've got to scale it down to a unit vector. And to do that, I have to divide each component by the magnitude, the length of RDB. So we got to find the length. And to do that, we can do Pythagorean theorem. And doing that, we get a 2.7. Of course, the units will be meters. So I want to divide all the components by 2.7, as well as the magnitude by 2.7 to get our unit vector. So I'll just do that math. And we'll get these unit vector components. And now, of course, we just have to take how much force is in this TDB vector and multiply it through all of these things as well. So we got that. And now I'll do the same process for TDC. We first need to make a position vector from D to C. And we'll do that by doing coordinates of C final minus coordinates of D, the initial. And our coordinates of C will be a zero in the X a positive 1.5 in the y. It looks like we're upwards 3 again in the z. Of course, we have the same coordinates of d as last time. And doing our vector subtraction, 0 minus 1 is a negative 1. 1.5 minus 0 is a 1.5. And a 3 minus 1 is a 2. 
we can use Pythagorean theorem to figure out the length from C to D and we'll get that same 2.7 meters which of course will divide by all the components as well as the magnitude to get that univector from D to C and we'll get these univector components really the same ones as from D to B but um, it's just going in the positive y this time around instead of the negative y and that makes sense from our picture these things are going in really the same direction except for the y and now I can multiply everything by the tension in TDC and I'll get the tension vector and I just want to remember to put DC as the subscripts I forgot to do that over here but I'll fix that in one second now for this distributed load here I know that this distributed load will act right in the middle of this rectangle and the force that represents all this rectangular loading here is just the area under that load intensity curve so it's really the area of the rectangle which will be my base which is going to be 3 times my height 800 so 2400 newtons so I'm just going to call this F and it's only acting in the negative Z direction so that's its force vector right there and I can make the force vector for this ball and socket joint here just has an X, Y, and Z component and that's that so I can sum these forces your X components, Y components, and Z components I can get three equations off that but I need to sum all of the moments of these forces about a point so I'll do that first before I bring everything together and I will sum all my moments about A. So I need to calculate the moments of all these forces about A. So I'll do that, do them all in the same order as I did the force vectors, starting with T dB. So the moment of T dB will be some R vector, some position vector, cross the T dB force vector. So for my R, it can be from A really to any point on the line of action of that force, TDB. You want to choose the simplest one possible, and I think that simplest one will be from A to D. So I'll just write that in the subscripts of the R, from A to D. And making this position vector actually doesn't even, even require you know coordinate subtraction or anything if I go if I walk from A to D I see that I walk one in the X so it'll be one I I don't go in the Y direction at all so that'll be a zero in the Y direction J direction and I go into Z one meter so a plus one in the K and with that I can set up my matrix cross product so I know to actually calculate this moment vector I have to first cover up the I's and do this product minus this product well this product is a zero minus this and that will result in a positive number a zero minus that negative product so I get this the J I cover that up and it's essentially going to be a 0 0.741 minus a negative 0.37 and that comes out to be a 1.11 TB but J is weird you have to times that result by an extra 
negative 1, which negates the whole thing. Same deal for k. We'll have a essentially a negative 0.556 TB minus a 0. So negative 0.556 TB. Okay, the moment of the tension TB about A. Got that. So now my next one will be the moment of tension DC. Okay. For my R vector, I can just use that same from A to D as I did last time. So there's our cross product setup. And now we can perform that cross product. Covering up that x, we'll have a 0 minus a 0.556 TC. Cover up my j. It'll be a 0 0.741 minus a negative 0.37. So a 1.11. Again, we have to multiply that result by negative because it's j. And for our z, it'll be a 0.556 TC minus a zero. All right, so we got that. So next will be the moment from that rectangular load. And I'll choose my r to be from a, of course, to that center point of that rectangle. So if I walk from A to that point, I'm going to go this distance in the X. A 1, a 1 1.5, and another 1.5, half of that 3. So that'll make 4. A positive 4 in the X. I'm really not going anywhere in the Y. So a 0 in the J. And looks like I'm going up this full 1.5 in the z. So a plus 1.5 k hat. All right, I'll set up the cross product in between this r and this f. So I'll crunch this cross product. We'll have a 0 minus a 0, so a 0 in the x direction. We'll have a product here, minus a 0, and 4 times 2400, 4 times negative 2400, that is, will be a negative 9600 in the y. Of course, we've got to multiply this result by negative 1, which makes this positive. Now, covering up the k, we have another 0 minus 0. So a 0 in the z direction. So that's our moment of that applied rectangular load about A. Our last force is that A itself, that ball and socket joint. But since this force of A is applied at this point, its moment about A will be 0. So no need to calculate anything there. So let me assemble all my force vectors, all my moment vectors, and I will add other components. Set equal to zero. So I'll add the x components of my moments, and the y, and the z, the sum of which are all zero. And that'll get me three equations. So there are my three moment equations. Just take a second to make sure you're okay with them. Same thing for my forces. I'll add up all their x's, their y's, and their z's. So we got those three equations. So in this system of equations, we only have five unknowns. AX, AY, AZ, TDB, which I'm just calling TB, and TDC, which I'm just calling TC. Doesn't look like I can solve any one of these directly, so I'm going to put this into 
a matrix and I'll let the calculator solve them. And if you don't know how to solve a system of linear equations using matrices, I recommend learning. It's a good habit to get into. The hard part is already done. We've done the vectors, the cross product, all that stuff. Now we just let the math do its thing and it should pump out our answers. So if you don't know how to do it, I have a video that will teach you how. Feel free to check it out. So I always start out with our unknowns matrix first. Our unknowns are going to be AX, AY, AZ, TDB, and TDC. And what we're doing is we're multiplying this matrix by what's called our coefficients matrix. And then this is all equal to our constants matrix, sometimes known as our right-hand side matrix. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each one of these equations and put them in a row of this matrix. All of the coefficients will go here. That is, all of the numbers that are right by one of our unknowns. The numbers that are constants that don't have unknowns will go to the right hand side of the equal sign and then they'll go here. That's just a crash course in how to put all this stuff into this system of matrices. So coefficient, we're doing this equation, of AX is 0 because AX is not in that equation. Coefficient of AY is also 0 because it's not in there as well. Same thing with AZ. TB does have a coefficient, 0.556. TC does as well. That's negative 0.556. And 0 is going here. So I just noticed that we have six equations. We only have five unknowns, for, so we're not using this. So I'm a little worried when I put these in to the calculator that uh, we'll get some sort of matrix problem. Never taken any matrices classes, so I'm not sure about the theory behind it. But looks like this last equation is chock full of information. It's kind of a shame that we're not using it. So I'll try this out and see what happens. Yeah, so as I was afraid of, the calculator is giving me this uh, singular matrix error. So, yeah, maybe it would work if we use these equations, but at this point, kind of looking back at our system, we can combine two equations, two unknowns here, and get TB and TC out of there. We can solve for them, and then I'm pretty sure the rest of our system will come out. Yeah, so I just put these two equations into a matrix, and I got these two answers. I was still kind of worried because what if I chose to use these two? I mean, these are two other equations, T, B, and T, C. Let's pray to God that they're not going to give us different answers. Luckily, they gave me the same answers, so I'm pretty happy. So with these two, I can use this equation to get AX, this equation to get AY, this equation to get AZ. So if I do that, I'll get these answers for AX, AY, AZ. It kind of makes sense. These two are the same because really, they're in the exact same direction. And um, this entire system is symmetrical. We have this load here. This guy's going to take some. This guy's going to take some. We're both going to take equal shares of that same load because everything's symmetrical. And since there's nothing pushing in the y direction at all, it makes sense why no y reaction is needed from that ball and socket joint. So this is kind of making sense. So I guess I learned a lesson too. Before blindly putting this stuff into a matrix, see if you can do stuff. So, hope everything made sense. Feel free to ask any questions you may have in the comments.